Hello and welcome to Daily News Simplified, an answer to what, why and how of newspaper analysis from the perspective of UPSC examination. Today we are going to cover Delhi edition of Hindu newspaper dated 3rd of April 2020. The articles which we are going to cover today are displayed on the screen. Let's now begin the discussion. Now we will start today's discussion with a very important concept appearing on page number 8 which is geofencing. Now it is important for us to understand what geofencing actually means, what is the concept behind it and what are its various applications. But before that, let's have a look at how it actually works. So you see a map on which a car is plotted and it has started traveling. And the area which is bounded on the map is the fence which has been created in the virtual map. And let's see what happens as soon as the car crosses this virtual fence. You saw that how an alarm was triggered. But as soon as the car entered back into the areas defined by the geofences, the alarm stopped. Now the government has tested an application that triggers emails and SMS alerts to an authorized government agency if a person has jumped quarantine or escaped from isolation. And that will be based on person's mobile phone cell tower location. Now the center in this case is using powers under Indian Telegraph Act to fetch information from telecom companies every 15 minutes to track COVID-19 patients across the country. So what is this geofencing? Now geofencing as you have seen in animation is a location based service in which an app or software uses Wi-Fi, GPS, cellular data as well as RFID, the technology behind FastTag to trigger a pre-programmed action when a mobile device or RFID tag enters or exits a virtual boundary setup around a geographical location which in itself is known as geofence. Now the trigger could be alarms which we saw in the video. It could also be SMS or text alerts and it could also be targeted ads. And the basic concept behind geofencing is that first you draw a fence on a map for example like a Google map and this fence is virtual fence. Then you start monitoring an object which could also be a person or a car, you basically start to monitor that person or object's location with respect to this geofence and whether that object remains inside the fence or outside. Now this has become extremely relevant in current context. You must have heard a lot of news in which the patients eloped from quarantine or isolation centers and hence risking the life of others who came into contact with them and hence government has come up with this idea of geofencing the confirmed cases of COVID-19 patients. Also, it will show you on the map the locations in which currently COVID patients are active and it is basically to help you to avoid those areas even during the lockdown. Now multiple applications of geofencing is not difficult to think. Now one of them we discuss is pandemics. But a lot of interesting applications of geofencing have emerged lately. Because of rising popularity of mobile devices, geofencing has become a standard practice for plenty of businesses. Once a geographic area has been defined, the opportunities are seemingly endless for what companies can do. Let us understand how. For example in social networking, Location-based filters, stickers and other shareable content are all made possible with geofencing. Now as far as marketing is concerned, geofencing is very popular in marketing because it is an easy way for businesses to deliver in-store promotions alerting you right as you step in or near to their store. Let us see how it is helpful in management of human resources. Now you see that a lot of companies do field work, for example oil extraction. And companies want to monitor that what is the time a person is spending near to the oil well. And hence geofencing comes very handy in that situation. Apart from that, it is not difficult to think of security implications. So for example, you have a software which monitors the location of the car and you have set the fence as 50 meters near to your home. And as soon as the car crosses that 50 meter regions outside your knowledge, that means the theft has occurred and the alarm sets in. A very interesting application of geofencing is audience engagement. 
जियो फेंसिंग इज यूज टू एंगेज क्राउड्स ऑफ पीपल एट ऑर्गेनाइज इवेंट्स लाइक कंसर्ट्स फेस्टिवल फेयर्स एंड मोर नाउ दिस की टर्म हैज स्टार्टेड अपेयरिंग लेटली इन द न्यूज पेपर एंड इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड द कंसेप्ट एज वेल एज इट्स एप्लीकेशन लेट्स नाउ मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट न्यूज नाउ एन आर्टिकल अपेयर्स ऑन पेज नंबर टेन डी आर डी ओ डेवलप्स बायोसूट सीलैंड फॉर सेफ्टी गेयर The same news also talks about the development of handheld infrared thermometers by Naval Dockyard Mumbai. So what we shall do is that we shall first understand what is the need of such biosuits which are basically personal protective equipments and what are the components which should be definitely there in an ideal biosuit and the DRDO's role in development of such a biosuit. And then we will also understand the infrared thermometers all the handheld thermometers which are being used for screening at airports and various entry and exit points we'll understand the principle on which these thermometers work and what are their advantages now the understanding of these two important gears is important because the general science has been mentioned as a syllabus in prelims examination whereas in mains examination under gs3 an important component is indigenization of technology and developing new technology and since drdo and csir labs are playing a key role in indigenization it is important to understand what role drdo is playing in this key equipment in our fight against covid-19 now before understanding these two key equipments it is important for us to understand why are they needed now you know that covid-19 pandemic has already spread across the world and as of now it has infected more than a million people as far as the transmission of covid-19 is concerned it is mainly transmitted through small droplets in the form of cough and sneezing by the patient as well as it can be acquired by touching a surface which contain those viruses so that means that there should be a mechanism to avoid the physical contact with infected person as well as with the infected surfaces now as far as common people like you and me are concerned we can do with social distancing and quarantine but what about those people who are actively dealing with the patients of corona virus who are day to day interacting with these patients and treating them like medical healthcare professionals police personnel and many others so here the role of personal protective equipment as well as infrared thermometers come into play now visualize an icu ward full of covid patients so for example this person is infected with corona virus and has recently been admitted into a hospital now obviously know that main symptoms of corona virus is coughing and along with coughing this person is also vomiting and nurse and other medical professionals handling this patient will have to actively deal with this patient not only injecting various kinds of drugs administering medicines as well as feeding him so what healthcare workers need is a gear that requires far fewer interaction points because every time a nurse comes into contact with this person she could be brushing up against the viruses so we need to cut all physical as well as aerial contact with the infected person so we need an active layering to protect all these individuals and that is known as personal protective equipment or a bio suit now it is important to mention here that personal protective equipment are just not to deal with viral infections they are also used against chemical agents nuclear agents as well as to fire fight but here we shall keep our discussion limited to a bio suit now first and foremost a bio suit should be leak proof which means that no material not even air can enter inside this bio suit as well as there should be no exit point from inside as well because the person coming from outside like a medical professional might carry some other infection which will be detrimental to the patient's health as well so you need to cut all contacts from inside this suit to outside so that's why a leak proof suit and a material is needed so for that you need three ingredients now first is that material should be such which is non permeable and secondly since a lot of stretching is used while making clothes to fit a person's body a lot of sealing is used and now the sealant should be long lasting and adhesive enough 
An important point to highlight over here is that there should be an overpressure mechanism in the biosuit itself. Now what is this overpressure mechanism? Now although we know that we might make a biosuit which has a strong material and totally compact ceiling but still the probability or a possibility of leakage cannot be avoided. Now what they do is that they are designed to maintain a positive pressure inside the biosuit to prevent contamination to the wearer even if the suit leaks or fails. So the higher pressure of air inside the suit will prevent the air from outside into entering this biosuit and hence will provide a double layer safety mechanism. Now this is not the only mechanism which an ideal biosuit should have. Now apart from this it should also have respirator. Now as you know that coming into close contact with the COVID patient means that you are inhaling an infected air especially when you are dealing with the patient on a very close distance and which means that you need air which is totally purified and it is independent of the air of the room in which the medical professional is entering and that is why you need an independent respirator with filtration system. So these are the two common traits which an ideal biosuit should have but apart from this the specific Indian climate which is both hot and humid requires us to have a cooling system as well because you know that these medical professionals deal with patients over a long period of time for example you might be reading in newspaper that doctors on emergency duty are catering to these patients for as long as 36 to 48 hours in continuation and the material which is used in these biosuits increases the temperature inside these biosuits because they prevent the contact from outside and hence an internal cooling system is also needed. So these are the three things which an ideal biosuit should have. Not to mention that the biosuit being used in India have these. But an important development has come from DRDO which will immensely help in the production of these biosuits in the country. Now what DRDO has done that it has prepared a special sealant as an alternative to seam sealing tape based on the sealant used in the submarine application. Which means that earlier the Indian companies used to seal the biosuits with the same material which was used in submarines. But now DRDO has developed another sealant. And what DRDO is doing is that it has transferred this technology to private firms which can now use this to develop these biosuits. Which will go a long way in ramping up the production of these biosuits in India itself. Let's now move on to the infrared thermometers. Now you must have read in the newspaper and seen a lot of images where the passengers arriving from foreign countries have been screened on the airport with the help of infrared thermometers as can be seen in this image. Now before going into the principle of this thermometer, let's first understand what infrared itself means. Now infrared radiation is just one type of radiation that exists within the electromagnetic spectrum. Now this is the complete electromagnetic spectrum out of which you can see that visible spectrum lies here. Now this is the order of reducing energy whereas this is the order of increasing energy or frequency. So you can say that infrared emissions have lesser frequency than visible light as well as lesser energy. Also the wavelength of IR rays is longer than that of visible spectrum. But now the question arises that how this infrared radiations help us in measuring the temperature of a body. Now for that you will have to focus on this image over here. If you are exposed to even class 9th basic science you must be knowing that all matters emit energy in the form of IR or heat. Now if there is a temperature difference between the objects including the surrounding environment then this gradient can be measured and used. So for example if there is a heat source, for example a person with a higher temperature, the characteristic spectrum of IR radiation from that person can be focused on a detector which is known as thermophile with the help of a lens which is placed right here. Now you might ask that how this heat can be focused. Now you should not forget that after all IR is just a part of electromagnetic radiation. And just like visible light can be focused with the help of a lens in front of a source which is emitting the parallel rays to its focal point, infrared can also similarly be focused. 
Now this thermophile is important here because after absorbing this IR radiation, it converts this IR radiation into the form of heat. And this heat is finally felt by a detector. Now this is a special detector which converts this heat into electricity. The higher the heat, the higher the electric current inside that circuit. And the internal mechanism of this thermometer is designed to detect that electricity. And it is calibrated in such a way that the human range of temperatures can be easily translated from that electricity into the final temperature. And hence, within the fraction of seconds, it displays a temperature. Now, it is redundant to mention that why infrared thermometers are being used. For the simple reason because it obviates the necessity of a contact between the person and the person who is taking the measurement. It is fast, accurate and it can also be used to remotely monitor the patients. The Naval Dockyard Mumbai has designed and developed its own handheld infrared based temperature sensor for screening at its entry gate. Now it is significant because an average influx of this dockyard is around 20,000 personals every day and you can't just screen people in such large amounts by employing personals with one infrared thermometer each. And for that you need a system of mass screening which uses something like this. So I hope by this discussion it is clear to you that what are personal protective equipments and what are the essential things which they should contain. What are infrared radiations and what is the principle behind infrared thermometers. You can read the PDF of this video, the link to which has been given in the description and more details can be found there as well. Let's now move on to the next discussion. Now the next news appears on page number 8, Tablighi Jamaat on a mission to purify Islam. Now this little known Islamic organization has been at the center of a controversy after thousands of people who attended a religious congregation held by it at its headquarters in Delhi tested positive for COVID-19. Now this organization in itself is not very important because it is a sect within Sunni Islam. But it is important to understand a very important context of art and culture and especially with respect to religious and social movements in our country. And these two concepts are revivalist movements and reformist movements. Now if you have read modern Indian history, you must have encountered terms like Arya Samaj, Brahmo Samaj, Prarthana Samaj, Satya Shodhak Samaj and many others as they were religious and social movements. And they are mainly categorized into revivalist and reformist movements. Let us understand how. First, we will consider reformist movements. Now, reformist movements want to change the status quo in the society because they feel that a lot of bad things or corruptions or perversions have crept into their religion, religious practices or in society. So they challenge the practices which have become incongruent with those of modern values. For example, female feticide, Sati Pratha, child marriage, untouchability. So various such organizations emerged in our country which challenged those values which they thought were not congruent or were against humanity. And such organizations are known as reformist movements and one of the most prominent of them is Brahma Samaj. Now on the contrary to reformist movements, there are movements which are known as revivalist movements which agree that modern practices of their religion are not the same as the one in the golden past and hence they want to revive old customs and they want to take society to the same golden past which they talk about. And one of the most prominent example of such Hindu revivalist movement can be Arya Samaj. Now the main motto of the Arya Samaj was go back to Vedas. So the revivalist movements are influenced by some past traditions or what they call as pure traditions which existed few thousands or hundreds of years back. Now Tablighi Jamaat is also a similar kind of organization which is a Sunni revivalist movement and hence it should be remembered that it is not a reformist movement. The motto of Tablighi Jamaat is O Muslims become true Muslims. Just like Ar Samaj called upon Hindus to go back to Vedas, Tablighi Jamaat encourages Muslims to become true Muslims. And how do they become true Muslims? What is the way to follow the true Islam? That is to live like prophet or to behave or to follow such cultural practices which were prevalent during the time of Prophet Muhammad. Now the origination of this Tablighi Jamaat can be traced from Mewat, 
where initially the Mio's Muslims or a Rajput ethnic group among Muslims used to follow syncretic traditions. And the person who originated Tabliki Jamaat known as Al Kandlavi wanted to end it all through proselytizing. So ultimately Tabliki Jamaat works for the objective that each and every Muslim should follow the teachings and lifestyle of Prophet Muhammad in true sense. So for example men following Tabliki Jamaat usually do not shave their upper lip and keep a long beard. Now it is important for us to understand the two words here. Tabliki and Jamaat. Now these two terms together means society of preachers as Tabliq means a preacher and Jamaat means society. So how this organization works is that the small groups of preachers travel across the globe to spread the message of Tabliki Jamaat. So although Tabliki Jamaat in itself is not very important from the UPSC perspective but through it you can understand the difference between revivalist and reformist movements. Let's now move on to the next news. Now the next news item appears as a lead article on editorial page, making the private sector care for public health. Now the author argues that India needs a national policy providing for free testing and treatment of COVID-19 patients in private hospitals. Now the author argues that India needs a national policy for providing free testing and treatment of COVID-19 patients in private hospitals. Now this discussion is extremely important from the perspective of GS Main's paper too where the syllabus says issues relating to development and management of social sector services relating to health, education and human resource. But before that, let us have a look at where the health is positioned as far as the seventh schedule is concerned. Now, health appears as a subject in list 2, which is the state list. As entry 6, which is public health and sanitation, hospitals and dispensaries. Which means that health in India is mainly a state subject. So the main responsibility of handling or dealing with pandemics or epidemics lies on the state. But certainly the government of India helps them through financial and advisory methods. Now let us understand the arguments put forth by the author. Now according to the author, there is a need to increase the role of private sector. And she argues three main reasons for that. First of them, is that public expenditure on healthcare is low. Now it is important for you to have this data in mind as far as the public expenditure on health is concerned. Now it is your duty to find out that expenditure as a percentage of GDP and comment it in the comment section. So coming back to the point, according to the author, since public expenditure on healthcare is low, central and state governments do not have the fiscal resources to commit to the increased investment which the COVID-19 situation demands. And hence there is a case for increasing the role of private sector. Also, the central and state government hospitals are simply overburdened as of now. There is another reason. Governance of health service system seems clearly fragmented and has created anxiety among public. There is also a lack of central command which can govern all the hospitals in the country. And according to the author, these three main reasons lead us to believe that there is a fit case to increase the role of private sector in the country. Now the author cites two examples to substantiate her argument that government anyways is using the private services. For example, the National Health Authority, the ultimate decision making body to implement the Ayushman Bharat scheme has decided to cover COVID-19 treatment and testing under Ayushman Bharat scheme. People availing the benefits of this scheme will be able to access testing in impaneled hospitals free of cost. Also, recently government has also allowed the testing of COVID-19 in private testing laboratories. However, the government has put a price cap of 4,500 rupees per test. So the author says that anyways the government is using private sector facilities anyways. So why not increase their role? So the main arguments by the author are that there is a need to create a central command for tackling health emergency situations under the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Then author puts forward the idea that private corporate hospitals receive a lot of government subsidies, for example, free land, subsidies on import of equipments, and hence the government is authorized to ask for their services. And what services? For example, the government can instruct the private hospitals to allocate ICU beds for corona patients. As you know that private hospitals are well poised to provide specialized care and have expertise and infrastructure also to do so. 
Now, what happens if private sector don't abide by these guidelines of the government? Now, according to the author, the National Disaster Management Act provides for the local administration to take over any complex, whether private or public, to use them in cases of disaster. And since COVID-19 outbreak is already a disaster, government has those powers in which they can ask the private sector to allocate such resources as are needed. It is important to mention here that states like Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and Andhra Pradesh have already roped in private sector to provide support during COVID-19 crisis. Now also government can provide incentives to private sector for enhanced production of sanitizers, diagnostic kits, N95 masks and ventilators. Now you should remember that India currently is running short of almost all of these and it would be extremely beneficial if the private sector ramps up these productions. Now government can also unleash the creative skills of private sector in awareness creation because they are expert at marketing and they can also contribute in big way through philanthropic contributions to PM Cares Fund. Now this discussion is extremely important because it is often cited that private sector hospitals are not doing enough for overall health scenario in the country. Also it is a truism that the government health facilities are not functioning efficiently at the cutting edge level and hence there is a case for increasing the role of private sector. Let's now move on to the next news. Now this editorial appears on page number 6 and it talks about how we need to protect the forest in order for these breakouts to end, especially with respect to the deadly diseases which have appeared in past 50 years, for example, HIV, which emerged from chimpanzees, Ebola, which is supposed to have emerged from bats, and SARS, Nipah and coronavirus from bat and civets, and recently, hantavirus from rodents. Now, this article dwells into the causes, and the main reason which this article puts forward is that deforestation. But we know that apart from deforestation, the trading in wildlife is also one of the reasons. So we shall discuss along those lines. So what could be the reasons for the jump in viruses from animals to human beings? Now the ultimate reason is the increasing proximity between the wildlife and humans. There are two reasons behind it. Now one of them is destruction of forests. And the second one is that increasing acceptance and legalization of wildlife trading in China. Now the COVID-19 outbreak has been traced to the wet animal market in Wuhan, wherein the scientists believe that the virus may have jumped from bats to pangolins and then to human beings. Now the wet animal markets are the places where the live animals are slaughtered and sold. These wet animal markets are found all across the world, but they are quite dominant in China, both in terms of their size as well as animal species which are sold here. Now the image here shows the menu card of a veterinary market in Wuhan and you can see the diversity of animals being slaughtered and sold there. And many of them are exotic wild animals as well. Now in 1980s, Chinese government enacted the wildlife protection law wherein it designated wildlife species as natural resources. Now ironically, the act was named as wildlife protection law, but it was meant to legalize the trade in wildlife and hence they could be used for human consumption. Apart from that, the government also encouraged the domestication and breeding of wildlife, wherein licenses were issued to private companies to domesticate and breed wildlife. What this step of Chinese government did is that it brought a lot of wild animals which were earlier not consumed by human beings into the human food chain. And since humans were recently exposed to these viruses, they were not adapted and they did not have any immune or defense mechanism against these novel viruses and one of them is COVID-19. Similarly, the destruction of forests is another reason why we have influxes of so much of novel viruses. Now, as you know that biodiversity in forests retains dangerous viruses and prevents such viruses from spreading into human beings. However, rising economic activities such as construction of roads, Railways in the forested areas bring the people in close contact with the animals. This in turn increases the chances for the spread of viruses from animals to human beings. Now the kind of death and destruction which the world is facing in the wake of COVID-19, the world needs to reconsider the path which it is trading. 
वन ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट स्टेप्स कुड बी बैनिंग द ट्रेड एंड सेल्स ऑफ एक्सॉटिक एंड वाइल्ड लाइफ एनिमल्स जस्ट लाइक द इंडिया हैज टन एंड अनदर कुड बी टू पुट ब्रेक ऑन रैपिड डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ फॉरेस्ट नाउ दिस डिस्कशन इज इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम द परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ मेन्स एज वेल एज प्रिलिम्स एग्जामिनेशन लेट्स नाउ रिवाइज द डिस्कशन फ्रॉम द परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ प्रिलिम्स एग्जामिनेशन Now, out of five news which we have discussed today, three become very important from the perspective of prelims examination. Now, the first one is the composition of ideal biosuit. It should be leak-proof. It should be made up of material which is non-permeable. It should have an adhesive to last long, and it should also have overpressure mechanism as a safety mechanism to make sure that even if there is a leakage, the person wearing the suit does not gets infected. apart from that it should have an independent respiratory mechanism and also the suits with respect to india they should also have cooling system then as far as infrared thermometers are concerned it is important to keep in mind that infrared radiation are a part of electromagnetic radiation and they have higher wavelength than that of visible light but lower energy and lower frequency from the point of view of modern history it is important to keep in mind that india has seen both revivalist as well as reformist movements now reformist movement challenged the practices which are incongruent with modern values and one of the examples are brahma samaj whereas the revivalist movement want to revive old customs and take society back to the golden past and one of the example is arya samaj and recently tablighi jamaat now we began the discussion with geofencing and it is important to keep in mind that it is a location based service which uses wifi gps cellular and rfid data to trigger an action which is predetermined now this fencing is a virtual fencing on some map for example a google map and it has applications not only in pandemics but also in social networking marketing management of human resources security as well as in keeping the audience engaged at some site let's now move on and solve few questions from the perspective of prelims examination now we have a very important announcement for you and that is that from now on we are not going to discuss the mcqs in the video itself but what we shall do is that give you those questions in the form of quizzes and what you have to do is that first watch the whole dns and then attend those quizzes now this will help you to not only understand the concepts explained in dns but also to test them with the help of the quizzes which we have designed for that you will have to visit the e learn platform which we have created for you so as you can see that there is a dns video on the e learn platform and as you scroll down from there you will see prelims quiz as well and as soon as you choose a an answer you will be told whether it is correct or incorrect and similarly you can solve all the question and finally submit your solution and it will let you know the overall score and your performance now for those of you who are not aware of what e learn is it is a curated platform of rao's ias designed specially to help you in upsc preparation now a short intro video has been recorded and uploaded on rao's youtube channel by nagendra pratap sir it is highly recommended that you go through that video to understand to make full use of e learn platform The link for the video has been provided in the description of the video. Now it is important to let you know that all the PDFs published by Rao's IS like our Focus magazine, our Compass are available free of cost on this e-learn platform. So it is advised that you start exploring this platform. Now yesterday the question of the day was which of the following can be said to be the likely effect of declining crude oil prices in the international market on Indian economy? statement 1 widening current account deficit statement 2 increase in inflation and statement 3 depreciation of rupee and the right answer is d that is none of the above because these are the consequences of increasing crude oil prices and not the reducing and not reducing crude oil prices so the question of the day for today that is 3rd of april is the which of the following can be used in geofencing any object statement 1 cellular data statement 2 rfid and statement 3 gps option a 1 and 2 only option b 2 and 3 only option c 1 and 3 only and option d 1 2 and 